course, we're celebrating the life of Dennis Hall, sprung along. And on the line, on via Zoom, we have Calypsonian and radio presenter, Mr. Llewellyn McIntosh, better known as Short Pants. Good morning, Short Pants. Yeah, good morning, Robert. How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing this morning? Well, you got me to wake up, so I, I suppose I'm all right. Well, for that, for that, we are very grateful. And this morning, mm -hmm. we just want to chat a bit about, you know, Dennis Hall, your, your co-worker, your friend, your brother. Uh, tell me a little bit about the relationship between you and, and Dennis Hall. Well, <clears throat> it, it goes on, you know, way back because when he was at, um, at Nakarima Board, you know, where he was um, stage manager. And I was a teacher in school producing, producing plays. And I heard his... Um, I found his demands, you know, very, very stiff. You know, in the middle of a competition that you want to do the competition, you wanted to do things in a certain kind of way, and you had a stage manager telling you, you need to do X, you need to do Y. So I, I, I distinctly remember that very first meeting, which was not a very pleasant one. <laughs> but then, over the years, I got to meet him otherwise. Um, I got to meet him with the council tent. He was an MC. One got to admire his, um, well, his skill and his craft of telling stories. Um, I got to admire looking at him on television. In fact, on TTT, there was a segment he used to do in the Gaia program um, where he used to come out of a dusty cupboard saying that he was coming out of the archive and he would, um, he would say that he would ask you a question. Um, if you didn't know the answer, you get to learn something. Because there's a particular passion for the language. There's a way to pronounce words. Give it a new kind of language. Um, so if you answer the question, um, or, and you answer wrongly, then um, he could teach you the answer, and you got to learn something. If you um, if you got the answer correctly, you would have just eat, as he used to call it. Just as how he used to say you got to learn something, he would also say you get you got to just eat if you got the answer. Well, finally in the last what, four or five, maybe six years, um, we got to sit together in the talkie studio. I on one side of the console, he on the other side of the console. Every Saturday, every Saturday, um, the show was very popular. Um, dozens of people would call. Um, they wouldn't call to talk to me. Uh, they would call to talk to Sparang. I mean, I never did personally because whenever they called, there was something that Sparang could tell them, particularly about events past. I mean, I would sit on the console and I got to admire the the, the memory, his tremendous capacity. Um, well, some people have described him since his passing as a kind of walking encyclopedia, as a kind of Wikipedia, right? I mean, Spra and I, we were of the same age, and I mean, things that happened last week, last month, last day, I, I could not remember, but Frank remembered it all and the memory was the memory was clear. I mean one of the stories I could tell um, after he and um, I remember paying him a visit um, on one occasion and while I was there a group of trainees had come for Carnival, in fact it was Carnival this year. Um, so they had a particular name for their organization, and they had a kind of breakfast or dinner meeting. At the end of the meeting, they collected donations, and they came to bring um, a donation to Frank, and they met me. But they were from San Fernando, he was from San Fernando, and um, they started to call names of places and times and events. And I sat there marveling that Sprang had 
never met any of them before, but it's all the places he could remember clearly. And he knew something about one of the individuals he mentioned. And I mean, we sat there for two and a half or three hours going down memory lane. Um, if I might say that, um, I don't think that we took the time, took those hours when Sprang was with us at the CTC, the MNC organization, to tap into all those resources. The, the listeners call, yes, um, the listeners were always interested in talking to Sprang, um, hearing his wit, hearing his particular spin, if you want to use that term, hearing his spin on events, um, political events, past events, current events, particularly cultural things. Eh? He had a pasha for those kinds of things. He ought to have a and um, just as you went to camera and just wind him up and, and get him to talk, and um, we would have had an entire repository of those things that um, were, in fact, you know, a part of us, a part of ourselves, a part of our history, and um, we could have had them. Um, I know, I know I that um, I know that you all spent a lot of time as well talking about about Calypso because I know the show is culture talk. They talk about politics. They talk about all kind of thing. But um, in particular, tell me about Sprang briefly before we wrap up as a as a Kaiso historian, for lack of a better word. I mean, we're talking about about his knowledge and and all the things that he you know his memory and how great it was. But I remember a time that that you were you and Sprang were talking on on air and somebody called, and you all Sprang started to sing a Calypso. That was never recorded. He heard in a tent. How many ever decades ago? Well, I mean, as I was, the big thing about him was the capacity for recall. Um, I benefited because there, even though we were the same age, his connection with the cultural landscape was deeper and more formidable than my mm. practitioner. And maybe a lot of what I did was um, singular, it was narrow. I concentrated on my tent, um, the, the, the places I sang, and I could give you those stories. Sprang had instead a kind of world view. Yeah. And he would often say to me, um, short but you know that song? No, I didn't know the song. He would promise to bring it to me. The other thing about Sprang was he was um, a cultural activist. Yeah. And his entire house, he had records, he had tapes, and he would say, I search, you know, search and bring something. His nights going back, doing old tapes, um, collecting stories that he can come to culture door and talk about it. I mean, I was simply the vehicle. I would uh, turn the mic up on, and let ask him do his thing. question, tease him, yeah. and get him to respond. And oh he goodness. would share with me and all the listeners from that, that memory, eh, that capacity, yeah. all, right. all those things. And... Um, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning, uh, Short Pants, and sharing a little bit of, of your relationship and history with, uh, with Dennis Hall, the Sprang Along. Uh, that's all the time we're going to have for this morning, uh, but we want to continue talking about Sprang for the entire week. Of course, we're celebrating his life and his memory, but I want to thank you very much. Mr. Llewellyn McIntosh, Short Pants, for joining us this morning, discussing Sprang Along, his legacy, his history, and great man that he was. We'll take a quick break and come back with some more right here on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.